So, Lord, people do not need more information. We got enough, but Lord, they need your hearts. So, Jesus, would you, I already see it, Lord. I mean, you opened up the hearts already. So bless, Lord, these people. Thank you for good soil today. God, would you, would you shape words today? Would you take, discard what doesn't need to be? But, Lord, everyone hears differently. God, you got four different gospels, said the same thing, but they just interpret it differently. So everyone hears a little bit different. But what they need to hear today, let them get it. And let it stay inside. And devil, we rebuke you. You're not stealing soil today. You're not taking it. It's not drying up. You already lost. It's bearing a hundredfold return in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Um, yeah, I feel like I'm done. Bless you guys. That was awesome. <laughs> Take care. Okay, I will, I, I shared last Sunday some stuff, and I think I, I have to do it again because it wasn't a particular church, but it's totally a body thing. So this is going to apply to some of you. Uh, there is not a too late with God. And you go like, duh. No, I, no, no that's not what I mean. I mean, you can, you can quit and still keep going on. You, you can stop, you can go through the motions, you can do the stuff, but on the inside, the dreams, the visions, and all the stuff that God gives, you can just put it away, and you can just keep moving on at whatever pace. And God's saying, there isn't it too late with him, because he doesn't dwell in time, he made time. It's, it's irrelevant to him, the only one that's relevant to is us. And there's a message for God's people right now, it's not too late for you, amen? Um, he's, he's close. He's here. But if he really comes close, everything changes. I think we had uh, roughly a month ago, something like that. Um, we just decided we were going to have um, Pastor Craig from Calgary come, and then it just kind of turned into then this pastor comes and this and this and this. Never planned it at all, but we ended up having like minimum of, of eight pastors that were in the front row, and, and I was cruising in Pastor Paul's car, which is awesome, yesterday in his convertible, and uh, we were just chatting about this. You know when you have, it just so happened it was eight pastors. When you have eight pastors who, they're not just pastors, if they were ever going to quit in their 25 or 30 or whatever years, they would have quit. If they ever needed reasons to quit and just say, that's enough of this, they would have done it. So these eight pastors that were there, there is a level of dying to self. Melody was there, it was awesome. And so what I saw was this. You had, you had this front row, I had in our church, this front row of people who... They wanted to be there. They wanted Jesus. And, and, and this is a truth. If, if you really want Jesus, he'll come. But if he comes, everything will change. Um, I don't even know what scriptures I gave you guys. But Acts 2 is like the birth of the church, right? And, and as we as Pentecostals... We, we, we preach Acts 2, we build off of it, we do all this stuff. Um, turn in your phones, please. <laughs> Isn't that something? Used to be you could hear like the rattling of the pages. Okay, look at this. Because I, I have a word for you all today. So in the book of Acts, 120 people wanted Jesus. If they were going to leave, they would have left. I think it was up to 500 or so that, that 
had witnessed him before. And Jesus says this, dudes, just go and wait for me. And so 120 people waited for him and wanted him to come. And so they're in the upper room, they're praising, they're doing all this stuff. I want you to have a look at this in Acts 2. So when the day of Pentecost had fully come and they were with one accord in one place and suddenly there came, look at this, a sound from heaven, which, which, which just means this. That church didn't reach and, and stretch up to God. There wasn't, there, how do I say this, Lord? God came close. The sound came, it says, from heaven, which means this, the abode of God. There was 120 people who wanted Jesus and heaven came close. And when heaven came close, absolutely everything changed. Place got messed up. I even made a list of, of everything that changed. Listen to this. Heaven comes close. There's power. There's tongues. There's different languages. People are cut to the heart. There's mass repentance. People saved. There's healings, miracles, earthquakes, boldness, great power, no lack. Because God came close. 120 people just wanted Jesus. He came close and everything changed. Amen? Church, just want Jesus. He's enough. And then Pete preaches on Joel 2. And 3,000 people get saved. So I look up. I look up Joel 2 because I'm thinking, man, there's got to be something sig significant here. And uh, it goes like this. This is what happened in Joel 2. For four years, Israel gets pounded. And so they, they plant all their crops, they do all their thing, and um, devastation comes. Everything that they planned got wiped out. Oh, it's okay, we'll just, we'll do another year. And so they, they plant again another year and drought comes and devastation comes and they get pounded and they get pushed down. Do you know how much frustration that must have been? And then the third year comes and then they get pounded again. And everything that they had, uh, someone here maybe needs to hear this. And then the fourth year comes and for four years they got pounded. And anything that they had for momentum was cut short and it ended. They got pounded, they got pounded, they got pounded, they got pounded. And this is what Joel 2 is. And Pete is preaching this in Acts. He preaches that 3,000 people get cut to the heart. Now let me tell you the core message of Joel 2. It is this. I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten. And 3,000 people get saved, and everything is changed from that point on. Church, I'm telling you something. Here's the core of this. If you draw near, if you really want Jesus, Christians, I'm talking to y'all. We know how to do a Sunday Christianity. Now, Jesus shows up here. When Jesus showed up in our church, because we had eight pastors in the front who've got a level of death, they didn't quit. They just, they're legitimately, they want him. So Jesus shows up. Man, there's people getting delivered. People were getting healed. People were getting set free. Some people, they didn't, you didn't even have to touch them. They got healed. There are people on, on, the, on the floor. Demons were coming out of them. I was sitting in my chair, and I remember thinking something stirring in me, and I went, oh, my God, it looks terrible if the pastor manifests. <laughs> confirmation right there and then I just said whatever just do it God whatever you need to do just do it amen listen two years ago worshipping just like you all were here and, and God comes in waves. Lots of times there's like waves and you can feel it. Willows or 
billows, waves, that, that kind of thing, and presence and presence. And so I'm standing with, with y'all just like, I'm worshiping, worshiping, and I feel the presence of God. I got to tell you, I so love him. And I love his presence. We hang out together. We have fun together. We have all this stuff. And so I'm standing right here, and I go like this. I go, God, just come, because you want him. I go, come. And you know what he says? They don't want me. Because if I come, like you want me to, everything changes. See, he's light. In him, there's no darkness at all. There's no shadow of turning in him. Which means this, if there's any darkness at all, it all gets stirred up. And if there's stuff that we've been messing around in or anything like that, it's going to get stirred up because he's a light. He's a king of kings and he's only good. And you end up so blessed and set free and delivered. But you go through a bit of uncomfort first. See, if you really want him to come, he'll come. And if his presence comes, everything changes. And do you know that that church in Acts, you do not hear about them dealing with or having to struggle with anything that we struggle with. His presence was so strong, so beautiful. They had holiness. They had no lack. They were crazy blessed. Praise the Lord. I just sense church that we're in this place where God is saying this and he's speaking to his church. And it's almost like he goes like this. You think that I can't move. You think that your years are wasted. You think that it's all over. I'll just, I'll do this sort of a, I'll maintain. I'll do this, I'll do that. And God shows up and he says this, the years that have been stolen from you, I'll restore them. And I'll restore every one of them. But you got to come close. Amen? I may be slightly intense right now. Yeah. Give me an amen. amen. God doesn't dwell in time. He, uh, he created that for us and for the seasons. He created it for our benefit. But do you notice how we've become slaves to it? Listen to this. This is what we say. We say we're in a race against time we say no I can't because I've got no time no I can't do that because I'm out of no there's not enough if you go to jail you're serving you hear that you go to jail and you're serving time as if time is somehow become your enemy it's become this thing that is against you and you're always fighting against it. God does not dwell in time. Amen. We say this. If something's falling apart, we say it's decayed because it suffered the ravages of... Yeah. If you see a woman that doesn't look so good, you say the years have not been good. <laughs> Do not say that. Don't say that because you won't be struggling with any kind of anything other than you'll need a resurrection because you will be dead. Amen? <laughs> Gotta laugh a little bit, okay? <laughs> Serious, when, when, did, when did we become slaves? I can tell you when we became slaves of time, when we moved away from the Lord. We decide whether or not God is going to use us based on our experiences with time. Yeah. Clo the closer you come to Jesus, the closer restoration comes. That's what he is. He's life. And when he says and preaches right from the book of Acts as well, Joel 2, I will restore to you the years of the locust has taken from you. As you come close, that restoration power comes close as well. 
Amen? Now I want to show you some stuff here. So um, let's start with this. Let's start with Revelation 1.8. Do we have that? Look who he is. I'm the beginning and I'm the end. I'm the Alpha, the Omega, says the Lord. The one who is, who was, who is to come. You guys, we, it's like, I'm the beginning and the end. I'm the in-between. Who do I say that you are? I am. I don't struggle with time. I created it for you. It's not your enemy when you come close to him. Look at, look at Joshua. Joshua is hanging out with Mo. And by the way, listen to this. Mo, Moses, forgot who I'm talking to, okay. Moses, the friend of God, and his brother, Aaron, never died. They were taken by God. They didn't time out. They didn't get too old. In fact, God went like this, and he said it to Aaron as well. Today, I'm taking you. Go up to this mountain. I'm going to have two people go with you. They'll strip the stuff of you, and we'll put the mantle on someone else. They never had an issue with time. Same thing with Mo. Today, you, you're dying because I promised you that you can't go into the, the promised land because of what you've done before. I'm taking you today. He never died. Elijah never died. God took him. There isn't an issue with time. So Joshua is going to fight this battle with the uh, Amorites. And God says, yeah, I want you to go there and, and take them out. Joshua has a great relationship with the Lord. He's been with Moses. He's been with Aaron. And so he goes up against these uh, Amorites in Joshua 10, verses 13. And, and just a little bit before that as well. Do you know that Joshua's enemy, his biggest enemy that day, was not the Amorites that he was going to fight with? The biggest enemy he had that day was time. So he meets up with God and he says this, I, I don't even have enough time to wipe out my enemies. So he speaks and he says, son, uh, he said to the sun, stand still, the moon stopped, till the people had revenge upon their enemies. Is this not written in the book of Jasher? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven. Do you know that that midst of heaven, it doesn't necessarily mean this day, it has a two-part meaning. The other part means this, uh, the abode of God. So the sun stood still in the abode of God. In other words, God came close. Wow. And when God came close, time stops. Wow. Church, he doesn't have a problem with time. And when he says, I, re I will restore the years that have been taken from you, do you have a problem with time? No, it's too late. It's, I'm just, I'm too old. I've just been through too much. No, actually. He'll take you when he's ready. Look at this. Look at this. Go to Isaiah. Turn in your phones. Isaiah 40. Verse 28. I like this. This is like a... A word of restoration for me, and I want that to be for you too. I, if, if you scratch your head on this and go, could such a thing be? Let, let that happen. Because everything that God does is in the way of restoration. That is, listen, what do you think healing is? Healing is turning back the time that the enemy has done to oppress you. Yeah. Yeah. Isaiah 40, verse 28 says this. Have you not known? In other words, dudes, come on, don't you know? Haven't you heard the everlasting, which is the always continual God, is the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth. He doesn't faint. He doesn't get weary. He doesn't have an issue with time. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak, and even those who have no might, he increases their strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall but those who wait on the Lord now I want to just describe this Angie I need you to come up you need to be God <laughs> you guys had an awesome weekend so come on you're in the anointing so come here that's good 
Now, now, this is, listen to this. Stay with me. Those who wait on the Lord, wait doesn't mean I'm sitting there and I'm praying. Wait actually means, the term means this, to bind together, to be near. Say near. near. If you come near or if he comes near to you, everything changes. So here Isaiah is saying, he's saying this, if you would come near, bind together, be near to the Lord, here's what happens. They will renew their strength. Now renew is not, uh, I took some supplements, I feel great today. <laughs> That's not renew. This is, this is what renew means. Renew means change, alter, abolish the old, sprout, strike through overstep, cause to pass, change for the better, to show newness like that of a tree. I will renew their strength. They will mount up like wings on eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Let's do Psalm 103 really quick as well. Good. He redeems your life from destruction. He crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. He satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed. Same root word. Renew. What is that? What does he mean? It means this. Change, alter, abolish, sprout, strike through the old, overstep, cause to pass, change for better, to show newness like that of a tree. But you've got to allow him to come close. Whenever Israel came close, you never saw any problems. You saw God would take them. There wasn't like death. Nothing wore out. And here's what happens. And this is what I think is happening with uh, Alberta and Canada, except for a few people who would fight. When you move away from God, there's an issue. And this is where the ravages of time and all this other stuff happens. When you have a province or a country, and I can tell you that my heart hurts for Canada because it does not have to be this way, except for a veil of the enemy that is working on, on people. When you draw away, put up Proverbs, please. Proverbs 5. Now, this is good because Proverbs 5, um, God is always talking to a, a, to a dumb man. Pretty much is what he's doing. And, and he, he's going like this. Stop being so dumb. Really? And he gives, you, he gives a guy like three chapters. And he's going like this. As long as you bind near to me, things go so well. And it's actually a description of Israel. Uh, but when you start to draw away after an adulterous woman and you leave me, is when you're leaving the covenant. You start leaving the covenant. You start leaving all of the blessings, all of the protection, everything. But because he knows guys are dumb. He gives you three chapters and goes, don't do it. Dude, don't do it. But it's a reflection of what Israel would do as well. Amen. So look at this. And he's telling the guy, remove your way far from her. That's the one who draws away from God. That's all it is. It's the woman who draws away from the covenant. Don't do it because um, remove your way far from her and do not go near the door of her house. Please, next lest you give your honors to others. Look at this. Then your years. Your years. Whoa. To who? Oh, wow. Ooh. If you draw near or if you let him come close, everything changes, Amen. church. And I, I just, I tell you what, we're in this season Right now, I feel the anointing strong just saying that. Church, we're in a season right now. Uh, I'm aware of this as a man. Whatever I want in my heart, I'll get. I want the Lord in my heart, I'll have him. If I want to go do dumb things and I got it in my heart, I'll, I'll get that too. And it'll hurt me. And it'll hurt everything else. Whatever you want, church, you'll have. And I can tell you, this church is poised. That's a good word. You guys are absolutely set. And you are experiencing the presence of the Lord. But he wants more. He's not content with some of you. And he's certainly not content with Sunday. He wants your life. 
And when he comes near, everything changes. Well, I don't know. Oh, no, no, I'll restore all the years that the locust has taken. Well, why did they get taken anyway? Why did... Every time Israel moved away, every time there was punishment, there's stuff to come, they gave their years to the cruel one because they moved away. And God let them because it was in their heart. What a good God that goes like this. Yeah, I seen it. I know what you went through. I know this stuff. And yet I'm coming to you anyways, and I will restore to you all the years that were taken from you. Could such a thing be? Try me. Thank you. Thanks, God. That's Acts 2. There's 120 people who wanted him. And it says a sound came. It didn't come from outside. And that church didn't get lifted up into heaven. They came close. Heaven came close. Heaven, the abode of God, came down because 120 people wanted him. And when he came down, everything changed. It's no different. It's the same now. Amen to that. (laughs) It's not too late. It is not too late, and you're not done, and God is not done with you, and you would think, I've had, I'm I'm not going to belittle your years. It is all relative. I don't even bother comparing with me the stuff that I've gone through to you. That that doesn't even make sense. That's not even biblical. But your years, the one that you think that you've lost, or maybe it's momentum, or especially this one, because God is so good with dreams. He comes when you're young. When you're young, you had this momentum. You could run. You could do all this stuff. It's amazing. And then you get old, and because of things that have been said to you, usually words that go in or something like that, you feel that your momentum is gone. And then God comes forward, and he says something like this. Yeah, those years that have been taken, I'm the one who restores. No one else restores. I restore. But you got to come close. And if you come close, stop worrying that you're going to get changed for the worse. Amen. And he doesn't, he doesn't send forth emissaries to beg you to come into his kingdom. Oh, please, please come, please. He sets out his word. There's no one who loses lands or sisters or mothers or brothers or fathers or mothers for my sake which is like saying this you know what if you come after me it may look like you're going to lose something but if you do there is no one who will not fail to gain lands and families and sisters and brothers and mothers and fathers and and all these things and a hundred times more in this life and the one to come so why don't you give him a shot Please turn in your phones to Joel 2. I used to go up to the base. um, I think that's, is that Blueberry Mountain? Is that what it's called? Saskatoon Mountain? Yeah, whatever it's called. They they got the the base observatory up there. And uh, I was, it was a few years ago I went up and I was just, okay, God, what do you want to do? Just up there praying. And I started, went for a walk in the bush. And it's, it's like the Lord showed up and he said, I want you to run. And I looked at the trail. It was a deer trail ahead of me. And I looked at it. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't race without knowing that I can win. So if I'm going to race you, I look at the guy's vehicle, all that kind of stuff. And I'm looking at the trail and I'm, I'm looking. It's got obstacles all over the place. And I'm thinking, man, if I hit that, it's all over. Or clip my head, I'm done. And God goes, he's not, he's not debating with me or saying, you, he just goes, run. And I was about to, and all of a sudden, do you know what I consulted first before I ran? My age. (laughs) 
And all of these things happen within like, whatever it is, two seconds, but they seem like it's a long time. Seems like I'm having this conversation with God, well, going, you know, I'm a little older now, and I don't know if I can actually run and do anything like that. And he doesn't debate you. He just gives you this offer, and I'm left with this. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm dealing with, I'm going to probably trip and hit that, and I'm going to whack my head here, and it's going to go so ugly. But because he said run, there's this other side of the debate, too. Is like, what if I can? What if, what, if I can, what if I can do it? And then I'm going like this. I'm wondering, what's it going to feel like? Is it going to be awesome? And so I take off running, and I don't know where. I, I think I ran so fast and so far, I actually thought I was going to get lost when I turned around to see <laughs> if I can find my way back. But I, I ran. I was jumping. I was dodging like I was when I was young. I was, it comes back, I was picking everything way ahead, not looking in front, before I was doing anything, just run, and I ran till I had no breath, and I'm like, <laughs> like this, and God goes, how's it feel, and I'm like, really good, it feels really good, and then he doesn't ask you afterwards about what you were thinking because you're having this speed of thought conversation and it's like he's going so you're too old no I'm not too old is there anything you can't do or I can't do no there's nothing you can't do nothing I will restore to you the years that have been taken from you see he's he's solid on his part he doesn't need to debate. He doesn't need you to go and turn the scripture. When he says he's going to do it, he's going to do it. The only thing that's a debate is, are you going to let him by drawing close? I do not want to play church any longer. I've been, I've been trying for years to make stuff happen. And when he says it's time to happen, it's going to happen. Will you go with him? Um, Joel 2, please. Verse 23. I think we'll start there. Be glad then, you children of Grand Prairie, and rejoice in the Lord your God. Amen. Now he's going to address some stuff here, because especially as men, we're like, I like the old days better. I like it before. I like it before when we're doing stuff. Or even, I loved the anointing before. I did this, I did that, whatever it is. And God is coming along and he's saying like this. He, he never rebukes you for liking the old. He says, I can give you back that stuff, you know, but I can make it new. I can give you what you think that you long for before, and I can bring you into the new. I can make it so new that it'll change your life and everyone else around you. For he's given you the former rain faithfully, and he will cause the rain to come down for you, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. The threshing floor will be full of wheat. Now, wheat in the Bible says this, that it strengthens the heart of man. So he's talking about physical. And your vats will overflow with new wine of simplicity. The Bible also says this, that wine makes glad the heart of man. Now, I'm not, I'm not advocating that you go out and drink wine. I'm saying what he's saying in the word here, that the bread represents physical strength, that the wine represents simplicity, and it also um, represents new joy. It gladdens your heart. And oil, it says in the Bible, makes your face shine to ref reflect the glory of God, which is like an anointing. So here he's saying this. In these last days, here's what I can do for you. Healing can give you back that. Simplicity and joy again. I can give you back that. You can reflect the Lord. It's like you will have your joy back again. You will have an anointing again. And then he says this in verse 25. So I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten. Even as I'm saying this, there's... There's a place in all of us that we're not even really engaging yet when he says that. But you will. So 
Amen. Then he goes on to say, the crawling locust, the consuming locust, the chewing locust. So I looked it up. Crawling locust means this. He's actually, scholars believe that they're talking about these things. Um, the Babylonian conquest where they were physically destroyed. So physically. The consuming is the Persian conquest where they were dominated and they took their hope away. The chewing locust is actually when the Greeks and the Romans came and they took away their identity. So God is saying this, I can restore to you your health, your hope, and your identity. Wow. Caveat. Here, here it is. Um, even Jesus says this, and people will come and say, I want to follow you, I want to follow you. And he'd say, hey, no, go back to your house, do this, do that. And then he'd start to preach like this. No one, no one builds a house without first seeing if they've got the money to do this. No one, no one takes on another army or goes into battle without first seeing if their uh, 10,000 can beat the 20,000. And Jesus is the same with us. He's like, listen, if you want to come, come. If you want my presence to come, ask me, but don't play halfway. Amen? Don't hate the messenger. Okay, just one more thing. Go to Acts 3, please. Boy, I speak that over this house and over everyone that's listening that you'll not be able to unhear it. That he can and he will restore the years that the locust has taken from you. Whatever that locust is, he's not talking about bugs. He's talking about years that you think or momentum that you think or your future that you think can't happen. He can restore those years. And then 3,000 people get saved because he's preaching Joel 2. And then there's no lack. There's nothing. There's gifts all over the place. Crazy. And you know what else there was? Even the people around them who didn't like them were afraid of them because they saw the presence of God all over the place. I don't, I don't think that, you can't make this happen. It, it doesn't say that the people will restore the years. He will. He'll restore the years. Well, what's my, what's my part? Let him come close. If he comes close, everything changes. I brought a video. Do we have that? It's, oh, before I play it, um, Passion of the Christ. Show of hands, who's seen Passion of the Christ? Phenomenal show. And the guy, the actor, Jim, however you say his name, that, sure. Yeah. Yeah, they interviewed him, and in one clip it just basically says, um, what is the thing that hurts you the most? Because when he was up there, he's got quite a testimony of the suffering that he went through. I think he was even struck by lightning when he was up there as well. Just crazy testimony. And so they're interviewing him and they're saying, what was it that hurt you the most? So do you have that? Could we play that, please? The greatest pain I ever felt on that film, even more than the hyperthermia, I was in a dream and I felt God's love. It was so powerful, but I knew he wasn't close enough. And I said, you're not close enough to me. And my concern is the world won't see Jesus. And he said, if I do, you may not like me. And I said, no, you must come. So when we were on the cross together, he was completely playing the scene. And that was my prayer. I don't want the people to see, I don't want them to see Jim Caviezel. I want them to see Jesus. I want them to see you. But the pain I felt was all those people in the world that do not love him, all his children that do not love him. Yeah. Well, I'll love him. I will love you. I want you. <laughs> Ugh. I want you to know I love you, and I'll tell you every day from this point on. And if I could tell you one thing, our Lord loves you. Amen. Ooh. And 
and I was worshiping. His presence was so strong. And, and I've, I've experienced him before, so I wanted it. I wanted it for our people. I wanted it for our church. Like, Lord, I, I, want, I want you for them. I want you for them. And so I'm, I'm worshiping, I'm worshiping, and, and I'm, I'm asking him, like, is this the day? Is this the day? Is today the day? Will you come close? Will you come close? Please come, come, come more. Just come more. Just, just more of you, Lord. Just more of you, God. Okay. Acts 3. I didn't give this to you guys, so I'll just... Acts 3, um, verse 19. It's what to do when you don't know what to do. Just repent. It says, repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Now get this, it's not a time of refreshing. Many, 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 many times is today yours. And then he goes on to say this, and that he may send Jesus Christ who has preached to you before, who defies time, even though it was before, he can still do this now. Verse 21, whom heaven must receive until the times of restoration what does that mean? Well, I can restore to you the years that the locust has stolen from you. When? Well, it says right here that there's time. So I look it up and I go, was this some sort of typo? Do you mean one? And he says, this is what it means, even in the concordance. It says, no, often, many. There is many restorations. And how many are in this room, even today? I will restore to you the years that the locust... How many times do you do that? Oh, I do that many times. In fact, whoever would ask and come close to me, I restore. Many times, often. Church, he's the king of kings. He's the Lord of lords. Lift up your heads and lift up your eyes. The future completely belongs to him. You don't have to fret about it and worry about it. It's a weight that you don't need to carry. He's got that. He's the beginning and he's the end. When you come close, restoration happens, God. But you just got to want him. I don't know where you're at with that. There's 500 initially, but 120 people showed up. And God doesn't have a problem with that. Maybe you're at a place right now where you don't want him so much, and that's okay. I remember praying prayers just like this. Lord, would you give me the desire to desire you? And he did. He loves you exactly right where you're at. And he takes you and he goes from glory to glory to glory. You might be in the place right now where you're like the 340 women who were here. Crazy chicks, Jason, Jesus. <laughs> Holy moly. Maybe you're in that place like that and you're like, I'm now God just come. Or maybe you're in that place where I don't know if I want him to come just yet because I don't know if I want that discomfort. That's honest. Yeah. He's good with that. You don't have to know everything. You don't have to know what it looks like tomorrow. You don't have to know. But what you can know is this. He's the God who can restore all of your years. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Father, I thank you for, for your goodness. I, I thank you, Lord, that time is not an issue with you. You don't have a problem with time. You don't have a problem with how old we are right now or how young we are. You certainly don't have any problem with how some of us, especially guys, Lord, how, how many of us have just thought, well, we've messed it up too much. We have not had the momentum that we wanted. We're not as far as we want to be. We have messed it up. You don't have a problem with that either. 
Father, I'm going to thank you today that you are God of restoration. I pray even right now, Lord, for every person that's in here right now, all the years that are represented in this place right now, whatever momentum that people think that they have lost, God, I thank you that you're the king who restores. So even right now, Lord, I decree that you are shaking up old ways of thinking. You are shaking up old fears and doubts and unbelief. And you are just provoking us right now to dare to believe, Lord, that you can restore momentum. That as you come close, everything can change in our lives. Jesus, just come.